the last few Sundays, I've been preaching on our West Campus during our 11 o'clock worship hour here. And last Sunday out West, I tried something I'd never tried before, ever. I'd asked this question to people one-on-one -on -one for many years, but I've never asked this question in a group setting. I was in the middle of my sermon and I said, I'm gonna try to do something that's unplanned. I'm just gonna throw in this question Ask them the question and see how they do. So, we're going to do the question this week, okay, for you guys. Are you ready? I'll need your help. Say the word shop. shop. What do you do when you get to a green light? Okay. Go. I know you're betting on this new year, new you thing, but if you can't answer that one. All right, just for fun, okay. Spell roast, spell roast. What do you put in a toaster? All right. Isn't it crazy though, isn't it crazy that first question, once you hear op, shop, your mind gets there and, you, and we can't answer a very simple elementary question as to what do you do when you go to a, come to a green light, right? You go, we all know that you go, okay? And however, many times, think about this, Many times in life, we, the, the light is green, okay? The light's green. You know you need to go, but for some reason, like that crazy question, instead of going, we stop. We stop right where we are. And a lot of times we stop and we don't move forward. We don't go and move forward in life because we have barriers, we have resistance, we have pushback, we have conflict, we have problems that we're facing, walls that we're facing, that prevent us from going and cause us to stop. Some of those barriers, some of that resistance is external, it's outside of us. Some of those barriers that prevent us from moving forward and going are actually internal. But the good news is in all of this is that God has given us this wonderful gift. It's a gift that's been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's a gift that was on the scene before Christ came on the scene. So today we're gonna get to explore that gift, it's like you're searching around your house or apartment and there's a gift left over from Christmas and it's got my name on it. This gift that we're gonna look at in just a few moments has your name on it. And this gift will help you, I believe, get off of stop so that you can go. Because if you stay still too long, you will be toast. Okay, let's open up. I'm just kidding that. Open up the Bible, if you would, to the book of Acts. Acts chapter number four. And the word Acts is simply kind of an abbreviation for action. Action. It's the actions of the disciples, the very first followers of Christ, after they ex had experienced all these amazing things, now had to take action, they had to go into their world to make a difference. And we pick up the story in Acts chapter 4, verse 23 following, and then later on we'll get to that gift and we'll open up in just a few moments. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Listen to their prayer. Sovereign Lord, 
You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father, David. Now they're quoting David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord, against his anointed one. Continuing the prayer, verse 27. Indeed, Herod, Pontius Pilate, and together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city conspired against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided before hand should happen now, look at verse 29, now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. There are so many takeaways from this passage. We'll just look at a, a few of them. The first takeaway that I see coming from this passage in the actions, the acts of the apostle is this is that you and I, just like Peter and John, have to stay in the battle. Stay in the battle. Let's say that together. Stay in the battle. What battle? Well, Peter and John were in a battle. If we had time to read the verses beforehand, it says they were released. What were they released from? They were released from jail. They had been in jail, they had been in prison because they simply proclaimed the crucifixion and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The religious and political leaders of that day in that town did not like that. They persecuted them, they arrested them, they called them in, they kind of put them on it, they kind of grilled them but someone had just been healed by them in the name of Jesus. They had him in jail. They brought him back up before the course. They said, listen, stop. Peter and John, stop. Stop proclaiming this gospel. Stop talking about the resurrection. Stop talking about Christ and, and healing people in the name of Jesus Christ. Stop it. They said, well, basically they said, we've got a higher authority than you. You know, <laughs> It's kind of what your kid tells you. You're not the boss of me. So they said, you're not the boss of me. There's a sovereign God and we have to do what he's told us to do. We've experienced this, this um, amazing relationship, this amazing reality through Christ and, and we simply have to do it. So they uh, released them. They release them and then Peter and John go back to their people, to their community and they pray this incredible prayer. They pray this prayer and they ask that God would give them courage and give them boldness to stay in the battle. Now, I confess, a lot of times my prayers, when I'm getting pushed back, when I feel like stopping or I'm on the ground because life's beating me down and there's a external and internal circumstances that are preventing me from going and moving forward, many times I don't pray, God, you know, I just say, God, remove the battle. <laughs> God, take the stress away. You know, Calgon, take me away if you want to go back to the 70s. So, right, we want to be escaped. We want life to be easy. Life is not going to be easy. Life is not fair. You're going to have pushback. And everywhere you turn in life, there is usually a battle. And so we need the encouragement from God, from his word, to stay in the battle. Work is a battle. Work is a battle. Your career, your job, you will face different battles at different times and different battlefields and need different strategies to make it through. But make no mistake about it. Work is a battle. Stay in the battle. Parenting, last time I checked, is a battle that lasts for a long time. I love meeting folks in our church and I'll say, I'll ask them, hey, tell me about your kids and how old are your kids? They go, well, we had one that just turned two. I say, oh, wow. Well, you know, let, let me, you know, the terrible twos. I said, well, let me encourage you about the terrible twos, okay? They only last until they're 18. <laughs> okay? 
and beyond and beyond. But anyway, <laughs> parenting is a battle. It's a, a, a battle to stay focused on what God wants you to do and his will in parenting. Recovery, overcoming an addiction is a battle. We have some people here that are two days free, two days sober, others two years, others 25 years. If you ask them, how do they stay free? They stay in the battle. They realize there's a battle every single day. The battle we all face in the culture we live in right now to do the right thing in a upside down world that we live in to simply do God's will, to be God's man or be God's woman at school, at your place of work, that, that is a challenge. It's a battle and God's word encourages us to stay in the battle. I had a friend of mine years ago who passed away uh, from cancer. He was a young guy. And, and as he was getting these reports about the cancer that was progressing through his body, he would say this. He would say, God's not surprised and God is sovereign. God is not surprised and God is sovereign. So as he was facing this battle for his life, he realized that God was still with him. So no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, I want to encourage you through God's word to Stay in the battle. It's not over yet. Stay in the battle. But you ask, I would ask if I were out there listening to this, I would say, how do you do that? I would write down on my piece of paper there or in my phone, YBH. Yes, but how? Yes, but how? How do we do that? Well, you remember the quote from Sun Tzu in his book, The Art of War? Every battle's won before it's ever fought. So we need a strategy. How do we approach this battle, the different battles in our life? How do we do that to stay in the battle? Well, if you want a good phrase that could help you out is this. The way to stay in the battle is to pray in the battle. How do you stay in the battle of life? How do you stay in the battle of work, of parenting, of recovery? How do you do that? The way to stay in the battle is to pray in the battle and before the battle and during the battle and after the battle. That's what they were doing. That's what Peter and John were doing. They were praying. God, you're sovereign. God, you're in control. God, you are the ultimate authority. God, you have ultimate power. God, you know all the details that's going on in our life. You know what happened. And God, in the midst of all this, give us power, give us strength to make it through, to go. They were praying in the battle. And I have to confess, sometimes I don't do that. Right? I mean, I may get up in the morning and pray and ready to take on the day, but man, by nine o'clock, 9.30, I've forgotten about prayer. I just... I don't know. And I know what you're thinking. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're a preacher. You're working at the church. I know. Sue me. I, mean, I don't know. I just, I, I have things going on in my day, just like you do in meetings and problems and situations. I just, you know, forget to pray. We got to pray throughout our day, right? We have to learn how to pray. And, and, and sometimes you pray. There, there are short prayers. You pray a silent prayer to God. God help me. God lead me. Before a big meeting, before you're talking to a big client, before you have to enter into a situation of conflict, man, you utter up a quick prayer to God. So the way to stay in the battle is to pray in the battle. That's what they were doing here in the book of Acts chapter 4. Now, what about the gift? Well, the gift is wrapped up and how Peter and John and in that community there were praying. How did they pray? What were they doing? Who were they quoting? This is the gift. They were quoting from the book of Psalms. 
Specifically, they were quoting from Psalm chapter 2. That's the passage we heard read earlier during our time of singing. Someone read Psalm 2. Psalm 2 is the most quoted psalm in the entire New Testament. The book that's quoted more than any other book in the New Testament is the book of Psalms. Jesus quoted from Psalms more than any other book. Paul quoted from Psalms. John, Peter, all of them pulled from this book. So the gift, and many of you have already opened this gift, you're accessing this gift, but the gift that God has given to you and given to me and given to us to move off of stop and to go and to move forward is the book of Psalms and learning how to pray through the Psalms and meditate on the Psalms. You'll find strength when you turn to the Psalms. You'll find empathy and compassion when you turn to the Psalms. You'll find a language that's able to describe where you are in your situation and your battle. You will find that in the book of Psalms. And again, the book, these, these different Psalms were written by David and by Moses. And these, these were kings, these were leaders, these were warriors who were facing literal battles in their life, life and death situation every day. There were hundreds and thousands of people under their authority. So though we read them and they sound so, you know, poetic and so, you know, hey, they, they were writing these words dealing with the rough and tough battles and realities that they were facing. So how do we pray the Psalms? Why do we do that? Well, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who before he was arrested by the Gestapo and the Nazis uh, during World War II and he could no longer publish right before he was arrested and he eventually was martyred for the faith, as many of you know, he published a book on Psalms, okay? And he said, there are three reasons of why we pray the Psalms. He said, we pray the Psalms because David prayed the Psalms. As God's word said here, God's spirit led David to write these Psalms, a lot of them. Number two, Christ prayed the Psalms after David. And three, we pray the Psalms after Christ and through Christ. So in my relationship with God and my journey with God over the years, one of the things that I have struggled with, one of the things I've tried to improve upon in my life is my prayer life. How do we pray? How do we connect with God? What does that look like? What does that feel like? What does that sound like? Well, a great place to start and a great place for all of us to continue to grow is by learning to dive into this this book that God's given us in the middle of the Bible called Psalms, which, which means songs or songs played uh, to stringed instruments. That's what it really means in the original language, but it's the hymn book of the, of the church. And, and Psalms are, are, are raw and Psalms are real and Psalms are very emotive and very expressive. So today, that's what we're starting to do. We're starting to launch into this brand new series on the book of Psalms. And I want to encourage you to journey with me, journey with us as we learn to pray these Psalms and go to these Psalms time and time again for comfort, for courage, for strength as God is leading us as a community and as individuals to move forward and to go with him. The Psalms are everywhere. They're ubiquitous in the Old and in, in, the, in the New Testament. And we're privileged and honored to have this gift and to learn how to access what these Psalms have in store for us. I love the book of Psalms. Some books in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, are, are, are boring. I'm, they just are. I don't. I, I don't know. You try to read through Numbers today or Leviticus. 
Psalms is not that way. Psalms is a book that you can turn to time, during times of celebration. Time, Psalms are a book you can turn to when you were in the pit and on the floor of life. You can open up your Bible to Psalms. You can start learning how to pray these words. And they will become powerful and precious moments in your life with God. God calls us today to stay in the battle. How do we stay in the battle? The way to stay in the battle is to pray in the battle. How do we pray in the battle? We start learning how to pray the Psalms. Psalms will be our go-to that will help us go through whatever we're facing. It's not time to shop. It's not time to stop. It's time to go. Go with God into his word, into the Psalms. A gift, a precious gift, a powerful gift to us.